My friends, our second text for this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter, and the first 12 verses. But before we read, yes, Bible check, Bible check, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We do encourage you to bring your Bibles when you come to the house of the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, the first 12 verses. Please, my friends, listen and read along. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all of Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees and the tree and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his weed into the barn and burning up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today for your blessings and all that we have seen, all that we have witnessed. We know that you're using these things to prepare us to hear from you. So right now, make me less. Allow me to decrease so that you can increase and become more and fix us by clearing our minds, opening our hearts and unstopping our ears so we can hear from you and upon hearing from you. We want to leave this place better than the way we arrived. Yes, Lord, we want to walk out of here better than the way we walked in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you would please, my friends, on this second Sunday of Advent, turn to a neighbor, look at them good, and repeat after me. Friend, today's sermon is called, It's Not Too Late for the Brood. Amen. It's not too late for the brood. I, I've shared with you before my fondness of John the Baptist, or as some say, John the Baptizer. John the Baptist, he, he, for me, he is one of the most um, gangster preachers, the most no-nonsense preachers in the Bible. He was a throwback to the old Nazarites. Samson and Samuel were also known as Nazarites. They, they were individuals who were set apart either by themselves or by their parents to serve God in a certain way, which included them refraining from any intoxicants. Also, they had to let their hair grow long. They could not cut their hair and they could not have any contact with the corpse. John the Baptist was a throwback to that. Camel hair coat, leather belt, eating wild honey and locusts. He's a throwback to that type of servant. He didn't care about people's feelings. <laughs> he didn't care about how he may have rubbed folks the wrong way. He didn't care about invites to parties. Had he, had he been invited to anything, he wouldn't have gone anyway. 
All he cared about was his calling. All he cared about was doing what the Lord wanted him to do, how the Lord wanted him, wanted him to do it. And he did not mind offending folks to get the job done, including Jesus, his cousin. He didn't mind offending Jesus either. On one occasion, while John the Baptist is in jail, he is hearing what Jesus is doing, and he sends word to Jesus, basically saying, are you the one we've been looking for? Are you the one we've been waiting on? Or should we find somebody else? That's what he told Jesus. I don't talk to my mama like that. But this is how he talked to Jesus. Gangster. Gangster. John the Baptist, he couldn't be, he couldn't be a pastor today. He couldn't pastor in this day and age. His message was simple. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of heaven is close. His message was major, to prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. You see, John the Baptist was responsible for getting people ready for Jesus. Getting people prepared to hear the message of Christ to hear what the Lord would have to say. So he baptized people who repented of their sins. There are two groups that we have here in this text that we don't speak of often. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees were lay leaders in the synagogue. They were advocates of scripture, tradition, and a strictly holy way of living. The Sadducees were similar, but not exactly. You see, they were a priestly party that was connected to or associated with the temple. They were traditionalists as well, but they rejected the importance of oral law. They also rejected the beliefs um, in the soul's immortality and in resurrection. They didn't believe in those. But since they were a party, they were also willing to work with the Roman government politically. Both the Sadducees and the Pharisees competed for the religious loyalty of the Jewish state. And they both saw John the Baptist as a threat. So, on one day, they decided to pay him a visit down by the Jordan. And John the Baptist sees the religious elite coming to him, and he says, you brood of vipers. Gangster. Gangster. Not what most folks would have said. Even individuals who did not like them, they may have said, what do you guys want? Why are you all here? What's the nature of this visit? Don't waste my time. What is this all about? <laughs> not John the Baptist. You brood of vipers. That's what he calls them. A family of snakes. That's what he calls them. Better yet, he's calling them sons of serpents. That's what he's saying. Because what they share is poisonous to the people. It's killing the people. And the people don't always recognize that, don't always realize this. And John continues, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? For the coming of Jesus Christ would pronounce judgment on them. You see, you don't get to mistreat God's children intentionally or unintentionally and get away with it. You don't get to just do that. 
God is not going to allow us to get away with mistreating each other. It's not a part of God's plan. I love the church. I do. I'm not just speaking of Lake Highlands Presbyterian. Of course, you know how I feel about, about y'all and about this place. But I love the church, the universal church. I love the church. I believe in the church. Jesus declared a promise over the church that the gates of hell would not overcome the church, would not prevail against the church. But the church, the church has become a breeding ground for broods, for broods. You see, we've become more religious than righteous, and that's not God's will. We cling to traditionalist thoughts and practices that have bound and restricted many who just want to live righteously according to the will of Jesus and not ours. In other words, they don't want to live righteously the way that we want them to live righteously. They want to live righteously the way Jesus wants them to live righteously. And we have declared that ain't Willie Cates is a saint and should be followed. You know Ain't Willie Kate, don't you? You know Ain't Willie Kate never let worship start late. She wouldn't let it happen. She was a saint. Ain't Willie Kate said that women had to always wear stockings when it came to church and men always had to wear a three-piece suit and if they didn't wear stockings and three-piece suits, they were sinners and shouldn't be in the church. And ain't Willie Kate. Well, she was a saint. Ain't Willie Kate used to make us stay in worship for two, three hours until everybody gave as much money as Ain't Willie Kate said they were supposed to give. And nobody argued because Ain't Willie Kate was a saint. You know, Ain't Willie Kate, <laughs> all by herself intentionally put a whole bunch of folks out of the church because she believed they didn't deserve to be here. And nobody argued because Aunt Willie Kate was a saint. Broods. Broods. This is what John the Baptist says. He said, don't think that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, or we have ain't Willie Cates. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. How many people, my friends? Have we run away from the church? How many people have we tried to deny access to the church because they didn't fit our traditions? Because they didn't fit our plans? Well, I've got good news for those who live as modern day broods of vipers. I've got good news. Here it is. There's hope. There's hope. How do we fix it? We repent. We repent from being judges. We stop from being judges and we leave all the judging up to the one whose sandals we're not fit to carry. Whose sandals we're not fit to tie. But before we begin looking cross-faced at folks, here's the harder truth. 
We all, we all at some point or another have been a viper in a brood. Oh, hello, somebody. I have been a viper in a brood before. That's why I know there's hope. That's why I know. Because Jesus came into the world to save vipers of broods too. Oh, there should be about 10 amens right there. I'm going to leave you alone today. I'm leave you alone. Here's the word. Repent. 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 In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen.